Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Space Science with Python. As you have may seen in my last YouTube shorts, I was focusing a little bit on the Comet C2022 E3 and I showed you how to add the Comet in open source planetarium software Stellarium and also how to find it and how to track it in the next couple of days. And now you see today it is between the star of Polaris and the Big Dipper. So if your night sky is clear and there are no clouds or something like that, you have the perfect geometric yeah, attributes to identify or to search uh, the comet. Though you have to note that the comet is quite faint, it's limiting or as apparent magnitude is at, at around 5.5 mag and the limiting magnitude for the naked eye is at around 6. So if you have any binoculars and a dark night sky, just go outside and take a look and find this particular comet. Now, in today's session, we are using Python to generate this kind of sky maps. So it is nice and all to use this kind of digital tools with all the output and also make some screenshots or something like that, or use the mobile app to go outside and take a look at the, at the, at the stars. But I would suggest that we are diving today into Python, a new Python library for astronomy, and then we will create our own sky maps. So let's dive into the code. Now for today's session, we are going to use a Python library called Skyfield. So Skyfield um, has a proper nice documentation. You can see um, some examples and how you can compute the position of the planets, for example, asteroids and so on. And I would describe it a little bit like a high level API for spies. So it still needs some kernels. It still needs some logic of vector addition and so on. But overall, it's a high level API and it makes, yeah, it makes your life a little bit easier, so you don't have to dive deep into, into SPICE and can generate some output quite quickly. So of course, there are also some other libraries like AstroPy, which is also a very sophisticated library, but today I would like to show you Skyfield, and I think it's not that commonly known. So if we take, a, for example, a look at the GitHub source, we will see that's, well, almost a thousand stars, that's quite fair. Um, quite a lot of stars, I would even say, but compared to AstroPy or other libraries, this is like a mid-sized library. Um, but yeah, I would say a little bit underestimated because a lot of people do not know it, especially in the amateur astronomy community. So let's show let's show you these the capabilities of this library. Now, if you want to install it, I put everything into the requirements txt and also the codes in the corresponding dictionary 026. And if you don't want to yeah, set up a re uh, an environment based on a requirements txt, you can simply write pip install skyfield with an exclamation mark in a notebook cell and it installs um, from scratch. Well, in this notebook here, we are going to compute now the sky map or the plot and also visualize the position of the of the comet for different dates. And yeah, we need to first import Skyfield and also some, some submodules in there. We will dive into this a little bit later, as well as some standard libraries. Now, what do we want to do? We want to compute the position of the comet. And first of all, we need to set the date. And the date I've chosen, well, today's date. Uh, the UTC time zone, and then also, yeah, I compute a time range for 11 days. So starting today, 11 days, and then put everything into this Python list. And this Python list is then simply a list of daytime objects, which is then converted converted into a ephemeris time using, yeah, the so-called time scale, this time scale functionality of Skyfield to yeah, to convert into an object that Skyfield can interpret now. So let's execute this cell. And as Spice, um, yeah, Skyfield also needs a kernel file. And our kernel for today is the simple de432s.bsp. Maybe you, if you remember, this kernel was used for some generic purposes, for position computations of planets and the sun and so on. And this is what it's all about. We need the position of the comet or the orbital elements, and we need the position of the Earth with respect to the Sun so that we can compute the position of the comet as seen from Earth. And this is basically everything we will do today. So 
we literally load the kernel here and then from the generic kernel we extract the sun and the earth and you can see also here that it's quite nice and human readable so it's not like working with nif codes or something like that it's a little bit easier to use than spice now what, what do we need to do well we need of course the comet information so the comet information we can directly download it from the minor planet center which is being done here we also need to use or uh, need to download star information or stars information and this is from the Hipparchos satellite mission. So Hipparchos was an ESA satellite in the late 80s and beginning 90s. And it created some, some catalogs of high precision astrometry information of, um, of stars and also astrometric positions. So the brightness and also the position of the stars. And this star catalog is now, let's say, our standard to, um, to, 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 to plot to plot some stars but we also need the Hipparchos data because we will use a constellation file and this constellation file contains all information um, about our star constellation so which stars are connected how to draw a constellation like the Big Dipper or 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 the Gemini or also Orion and it's a quite simple file so if you take a look here, you see, for example, yeah, the name like Andromeda, for example, and then some numbers here. And each number corresponds to an index or of the catalog of Hipparchos. And we'll take a look at this in a second. In, in fact, this script here could also work with the Stellarium data from the Stellarium GitHub repository. So, in fact, I used some parts for this notebook from the Skyfield tutorial. But unfortunately, currently the Stellarium um, parsing commands or functions that use the Stellarium repository do not really work. So I had to download everything manually, do some data parsing manually on my computer and then also yeah, using this file. Um, but yeah, I will. I also upload this in the GitHub repository. You don't have to be bothered by some issues. So let's execute this file here. Um, and then we can take a look at the comets and the stars data frame. So the comets data frame is the current data frame for the, from the Minor Planet Center with around a thousand comets. And you see here the designations like Kale Bob, like Linear, Catalina, but also like Oumuamua or Borisov. So we need to find our comet here in this data frame. And here we have the stars. And you see here that we do not have an index, it's simply increasing but the Hipparchos number is the actual index. So we see here starting number one, two, up to 118,000 with the magnitude, right, right ascension and declination information, as well as also the epoch year. And you see here also the epoch year is from 1991. And now if we take a look at the constellations, we see now here with the uh, for the Andromeda, a constellation we see that the Hipparchos index 7607 and 4436 create a line and then 4436 and 2912 create a line and so on. So this is basically a large network or a graph that connects the stars in our sky map to a constellation. In the next step we need now to extract our comet C2022 E3. So we search for a string that looks like this and this is also the only comet and then we need to squeeze it. So we create, um, yeah, we create a series from a single row. So this data frame would, uh, is now, yeah, condensed to a single row with the, with this comet. And then we put it into a data frame series. And this data frame series can then be interpreted by scale field function, where we use the comet information, the time information, and also here, the gravity, uh, gravity constant times the mass of the sun, the GM value. So that we add this one here to our sun ephemeris so that we yeah, in a way add these two vectors or let's say we consider the orbital elements of the co of the comet with respect to the sun so this is what we do here in cell number nine now in the next cell we simply extract now the edges uh, of our constellation so this pairs here just executed um oops again we are um using some 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 codes from the skyfield repository so this is one of these parts 
as well as now the following where we are now extracting the star positions yeah based on some uh based on our earth position position so the logic is quite simple and quite nice here we are taking the earth at a certain observation time and we want to observe the stars so this is like the logic of this earth class now and we do the same thing also here below with our comet yeah so we want to observe at a certain time step or a list of time steps our comet and here in between we apply a stereographic projection so we have our right ascension and declination values and we need to convert it in a way that we can create a nice sky map so this is what we do now that we can apply in our plotting routine here in our last two cells so first of all i would say we set a field of view in degrees uh, with like 90 degrees so you can also choose a different value or so but 90 degrees we will see looks quite neat and then also a limiting magnitude and i set the limiting magnitude to six so this is like the limit of the naked human eye so if the sky is very dark in your area you can see stars up to a magnitude of around six and just remember the comet has a magnitude of around 5.5 currently so we add now a new column in our data frame for the stars um, that indicates whether the stars are visible for, visible for us or not and we also scale the size of the stars depending on the magnitude so we have a very simple logic implemented that um, yeah that scales with the apparent magnitude of our stars now we can yeah apply this all the things we did before so all our data frame to create our plot so we create a dark plot and as you see here we are creating also adding a lot of stuff in a red color so the idea is that the human eye adapts to the dark sky during the night and it takes like 15 to 30 minutes to to adapt to the darkness and if you use a white flashlight or something like that you really destroy your adaption so you reset your eyes in a way so it's quite quite common in amateur astronomy that um, you use a red light for example and also all the documentation and text and sky maps are also red colored so the red color appears to yeah not affect our adaption so severely as white light for example so that's why we will create a very dark um a very dark sky map of of today's session so the same capabilities are also in stellarium if you move back here you have a small option below where you can set the night mode and then you see everything becomes darker but still using such an application outside is also not that good because yeah for example your tablet or phone screen is still very bright and can destroy your um, night sky adaption so this is what we do here we also add the comet position also some labels and do some formatting this is also parts um, that have been extracted from the um, skyfield tutorial so if we apply this now we of course we need to ex we need to execute this command here first to create this two columns and then we can create the plot and there you see now our sky map and you see here for example the big dipper that is part of the of the bear so that's the reason why we have a few more lines here and as i said in my youtube shorts we have here the polaris by extracting this line of the big dipper by a factor of six and here in between we have now our comet and yeah that's the path of the comet you see in the next couple of days so it's moving quite fast yeah just remember this is the field of view around 90 degrees so it gives you a feeling how fast the comet is now moving so it will really move by several degrees per day so if you want to track it you really have to get familiar with the night sky and also with the constellations i think this will help you a lot so yeah you can now download this um this figure here and print it out yeah i said that white color is not very good i mean for the comet i just applied it for now for the tutorial you can also change it to the red color or maybe i don't know dark gray or something like that but this is how it would look like so i hope you will use the tool maybe also in the future for other comets or asteroids and yeah just try to get familiar with the night sky using these kind of maps sometimes it's quite helpful to yeah 
to orient in the night sky without any digital devices or any support. So I think with this kind of things and then going outside, you get yeah familiar with the night sky and know where to look when. Anyway, I wish everybody a ha happy observation and also good luck with the weather. Um, so yeah, in Germany, it's a little bit cloudy, so it's quite difficult currently to observe the comet. But maybe you are a little bit more luckier than than I uh, than me, and yeah, hope that you will see the comet in the next couple of days. Take some binoculars or telescope, and until next time.